Welcome to the Investment Immigration Podcast by uglobal.com. This is your host, Salman Siddiqui, uh, joining you all from Berlin. And today, in this episode, we are going to focus on Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rica, I mean, not many people talk about the investment immigration options there, but it has plenty of options from what I'm hearing. And to understand the kind of options that investors, entrepreneurs, and even working professionals might have there, we have a very special guest on our show today. His name is Herman Duarte. He's the founder of the law firm Simple Legal Consulting in Costa Rica. Welcome to the show, Herman. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. And I'm very excited to share a little bit about Costa Rica and the options that they that the country offers for, uh, for, for immigrants from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us. And so, Herman, let's start with Costa Rica as a country. We don't hear much about its investment immigration options. So could you please give us a brief overview of the kind of investment immigration options the country has and what kind of applicants usually apply? Yeah, perfect. So uh, a little bit of a general overview of Costa Rica. It's a country in Central America with a considered to have um, 6% of the biodiversity of the, of the world. It's one of the few countries or only country in the world that doesn't have an army. So this is a very interesting factor because the possibilities of a coup or a war are non-existent here. It's a solid democracy, um, considered to be the most solid democracy in Latin America. With qualified workforce, that's why you have Intel here, you know, like the, you know, like you have technology companies keep coming over here to Costa Rica because they know that they can hire top workers. It's also a country that has great connections on, you know, for flights, direct flight from to, to Germany, direct flights to, to France, to London, to all the United States. And they are very interesting as well tax incentives for investors that allows them to do uh, business. Uh, and, and that leads us to the incentives to, to come here to Costa Rica. So let's say that we could um, classify the type of, inv- of, of residents, of immigrants, sorry, into four big categories. Tourists, then we have the immigrants that are knowledge immigrants, then we have the immigrants that are with capital, and then we have the humanitarian immigrants. The humanitarian immigrants, I refer to those persons that are seeking for refuge. For instance, Costa Rica uh, is well known as a human rights hub. Costa Rica is the home, for example, of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, just the equivalent of the European Court of Human Rights in Europe. And it has a very solid tradition of being you know, a welcome place for immigrants, for refugees, just for you to give you a, a number in a country of 5 million people, in 2022, we received 86,000 refugees request. Uh, that gives you a, an idea about the immigrant. Yeah, that's uh, a big number. On the big number of the humanitarian reasons. We have all the crisis with Venezuelans uh, and Nicaraguans, uh, lack of democracies that affects in a way. And talking about the, the other type of, uh, of, of, of migrants, just to give you like a solid number, in 2021 and 2022, we had a between 1.3 and 1.6 million of tourists coming over into Costa Rica. Costa Rica lives out of tourism. It's very, very common to see sustainable, you know, like biosustainable hotel chains here in Costa Rica where a monkey will show up in the door of your suite and you will have the opportunity to immerse into interesting activities, you know, whether it's like some night tour watching uh, the wildlife to other aspects. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of, um, so, n- not just tourists, but a lot of people from the U.S. also come in to buy properties there in Costa Rica, isn't it? I know at least of one example of a very well-established um, artist, and they actually bought a house in Costa Rica, and uh, they split their time between the U.S. and Costa Rica. So I think there's also a trend of people from the U.S., yes coming to Costa Rica, so that, isn't it? That, that, that leads us, exactly, that leads us to the other categories, the migrants of knowledge, for example, those people who have a very specialized knowledge and they apply for a residency or they become the manager of a company, they apply for residency, and the migrants of capital. So in Costa Rica, they created a law that has um, 
a five-year window period to attract investors, rentists, and pensioners. Those people who are already, you know, like have work all their life and now receive a pension of $1,000. The rent is refers to people who receive a monthly rent of $2,500. And the investors refers to those people who make an investment, just like you said, for example, in real estate. It's not the only thing that you can invest in Costa Rica, but the minimum amount that they ask here in Costa Rica to, to give you a temporal residency for two years that you can renew it for additional two years and after three years to become a permanent resident is only $150,000, which contrast to the half a million that Panama asked or the 1 million euros that I think Spain asked or the 3 million that the United States asked. I think those are the ranges might be different, but Costa Rica really offers you a peaceful country, a country with a lot of biodiversity. That's why you have Jack Dorsey that has invested here, like former CEO of Twitter. You have, you know, the celebrity couple, um, Tom Brady, that uh, w- was married with uh, Giselle, that now Giselle has her mansion here. And you have so many people exploring the different areas of Costa Rica. For for example, if the listeners want to, you know, get curious about Costa Rica, they can Google Santa Teresa Beach, which is, a very interesting place. Some people call it that it's an Israeli colony. It's like a predominantly Israeli people living there. It's really amazing, really great food, hundreds of restaurants, and hundreds also of experiences for people who are looking to heal. For some reason, this place has attracted as well a lot of energy healers, people that work with energy healing, with meditation, with a sound healing, also different areas of Costa Rica offers sacred plant medicine uh, healing sessions. So Costa Rica has been, you know, attracting a lot of people who are looking forward ways to raise the level of consciousness and at the same time to heal some trauma. That's what I want to know. How are they doing that? I'm sure a lot of our listeners are so interested now that you've given that background about the kind of investment immigration visas and laws are there that enable such people to come there, buy property, and live there for long periods of time. So let, let's talk about that. So the general uh, legal framework would be the law 9996, and it's uh, bylaws, which is uh, bylaws 43926. And this law states that investors, any person who has $150,000 and doesn't have a criminal you know, any criminal background, like doesn't have any crimes on their, on their history, they can invest in seven things, $150,000, real estate. You can buy any property that you put it under your name and you can buy it in real estate. You can, for example, buy vehicles as well. For example, a plane or a boat or a car that are worth $150,000, you put it under your name, that gives you residency, automatically gives you residency. If you buy, for example, real estate, but you don't want to put it under your name, so you you will need to put it into a corporation. That corporation, you will need to register before the tax authority. So in this way, you have an investment of the shares of a company that is active, an active corporation before the tax authority, sorry. So that's the third, third vehicle. What other vehicles? Securities. If you invest in securities, you know, in the stock exchange of Costa Rica with a, an authorized uh, company that dedicates into doing this, $150,000, you get residency. Venture capital funds as well. Projects of public interest. It could be, you know, like a concert, a festival, or some project that the government has decided, okay, this is a public interest because it will develop this area of the country. And also sustainable tourism infrastructure. Of course, the simple and the most easiest way is to do it on real estate. But also this type of investment allows you to obtain certain benefits. For example, once you get the the approval, which will be taking around something between three to nine months, it varies because right now there is so many people applying for residencies. It might change uh, the the, the time, the time frame for, for the answers, for benefits that you get. For example, free to import two vehicles tax-free you can two vehicles means planes boats or cars you can import them tax-free 
This is something yeah. which I don't think any other country offers that uh, you can invest in a boat or a plane and then get residency. That's really unique. But uh, to add to that, I want to also know that, say, for example, you invest in real estate or say a plane or whatever, then the a card that you get, it's a temporary card for the first year and then it becomes permanent. You, How does it work? You get, a, you get a temporary card for two years. That's a temporary residency. And then after two years, you can renew it again. You can renew it at perpetuum. You just have to show that you fulfill certain requirements. What are these requirements? Very basic things. You pay $128 for the ID card. If you can buy an investment of $150,000, you can, you can pay $100. You have to show that you still have the investment, that the investment is still under your name. You know? That's the other requirement. And you have to pay social security. You have to pay social security, which it varies depending on the amount, but it's something reasonable and allows you to enter into a, one of the best social security systems in the world. What right. other benefit do you receive? For example, you can import free of taxes the households of your goods. Some people have like very, very distinguished paintings of millions of dollars. You don't have to pay for anything. You can import also professional equipment. And it's important to say that this tax-free import is only after you receive the approval. It's not when you apply. Sometimes there is confusion of this matter. Then you also get um, a 20% discount on the transfer tax on real estate purchases. So for every purchase here in Costa Rica, the closing cost between notary fees and transfer taxes and fiscal stamps and other administrative costs that are mandatory, you can round it up around a 4%. So what it's saying that from that 4%, 1.5%, which represents the transfer tax, if you're going to get a 20% discount. And the other thing that is also interesting about this law is that it allows you to bring capital without any tax obligation. So you can bring in $1 million, $2 million. I have clients who have invested several million dollars in buying different apartments because San Jose is a very interesting city for people who want to, um, you don't want to put the money in the bank. You want to put it to work. You want to have some real estate, some property. San Jose has so many like really, really, really good options of, of towers with Amazing amenities, inspiring in Alice in Wonderland and really, 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 really great buildings that you know it's going to be full of tourists because tourists usually will come to Costa Rica. Those 1.6 million, 2 million people that come to Costa Rica, they come first to San Jose, stay two nights here, they pay 70, 80, 100 dollars per night, and then they go to the beaches. So that's a little bit of the traffic you see here with Airbnb is quite a lot. So there's a lot of people that are getting, getting like a return between the 6 to the 12% of their Airbnb's investment and, and allows them to also get residency. Like, like they say, you know, have Costa Rica as a plan B. I get a lot of American people coming over because they feel exhausted from the political tensions that keep going. Europeans, although they are not the, the majority of people who come here, 94% of all the regulated immigrants, which is a number close to half a million people, are from the Americas. The rest is from the rest of the world. But Europeans have been getting closer to explore moving here due to the ongoing tensions of the problem with Russia, uh, the, the illegal aggression of Russia to towards Ukraine. And it creates these incentives. You know, you want to move to Costa Rica in a place without armies and without having any of those stress, come over. You know, you will have top schools, international bachelorette, you know, for those people who have like very sophisticated lifestyles, you have all the brands of cars, if you want to buy cars here from Maserati, Ferrari to BMW, you know, to Toyota, all the brands you want. But uh, sticking to this point about how Americans are seizing opportunities in Costa Rica. So I want to understand, for example, I'm, this is a hypothetical situation, but say an American investor wants to build a hotel in Costa Rica near the, one of the fancy beaches that you mentioned. How can they go about it? Very simple. First, you find a good team, a good team that involves environmental lawyers, involves a good architect, it go, involves a good lawyer as well. You find also the property that you want to work with. You proceed with a due diligence. You know, you go with a due diligence to make sure that the use of soil allows you to have a commercial, a commercial use, that you will have access to water. Because in Costa Rica, if you don't have access to water, you cannot develop anything. You need access to water so you can get the construction permit. And then you start working on all, on all the aspects uh, around the municipality. Here in Costa Rica, although it's a country of 52,000 kilometers, more or less, um, 
you have your provinces and each province has a different uh, district, if you want to call it, called municipalities. And each district has its own government that has its own rules. So one of the aspect, a key aspect is to know if that particular land, for example, you can have like a 10,000 meter piece of land, but it might be limited to only agricultural purposes. So it depends to see if you have the proper land to do the project that you want. So that's why you also need a lawyer to carry on a due diligence. You will get involved and coordinate with uh, with with architects, with engineers to do inspections of the property, topographers to make sure that what it says in the, in the paper, you know, because Costa Rica has a very modern public registry system that differs, for example, from the one of the United States. Like almost all of the country is duly, you know, segmented in the in the public registry, duly like classified. But sometimes you will have a paper, you know, a plane, a plano right. that doesn't match the reality. So you have to do certain reviews or do you will have overlaps in a due diligence. It's common to find sometimes some overlaps of the neighbor putting a 500 meters taking away your land. So you go, like, okay, what's going on? The visa that they use um, is the same, right? Yeah, it's the same because then you're an investor. For the investor, what you need is to prove that you have Either you have shares worth $150,000 of a company that is registered before the tax authority, which a hotel would be registered, or that you buy, for example, you, you want to move here and you want to retire here in Costa Rica, and you have an extra million dollars, you say, okay, I'm going to buy this land, $150,000, then that land, you put it under your name, we go to the municipality, and the municipality will issue a certificate of what's the value of the land, and with that, we go to immigration agency to prove that you are an investor. And of course, we will need some other documents such as your birth certificate, your criminal records of all the countries you have nationalities and the countries you have lived. And these documents have to be with Apple Steel. And then there are other additional uh, aspects that you, you cover once you're here. For example, a photo, make the, you know, the formal request. We will have to go to the police station here to register your biometrical data. Sounds more sophisticated than actually it is, but uh, it is, right. you know, we have to register the fingerprints. But the process, uh, the way I like working with, with my clients, I divide it into three steps to make it as simple as possible. That's the rationale of my of my firm to make things simple, not be complicated, is one first of uh, collecting information, collecting all the evidence we need to prove. And the second stage is of applying and then we wait for the resolution if the tax, uh, if the immigration authority says, okay, there's something missing that we, we fix it or I want something else, I want more information. Sometimes they ask for things, they give you another chance to, to get it. And then the last and final stage is once you have to go take the picture, right? Uh, the final documentation stage. That's the exact moment where you have to show that you paid the $128 for the, for the ID card, and you have to show that you are enrolled in the social security, et cetera, et cetera. But it's important to start from the beginning of collecting the information because that's one of the key aspects of the of the of the application to make sure you collect all the important and relevant information of for course. a successful application. Of course. For example, in a federal country, you need to bring federal criminal records. For example, the United States, if you only bring the criminal records of your local police, that's not gonna work. You need to bring the federal FBI records, yes, just for example. I see. Okay. And what about the language requirements? Are there any language requirements that uh, they have to meet? No. No, you can. In Costa Rica, that's a very good question. In Costa Rica, there are no restrictions for foreigners to own land. There is only one restriction for foreigners to own land, land and it is if it's beachfront. All beachfront is a concession, and a concession has to be owned by Costa Rican. But the way you use it is they use a Costa Rican corporation, and that's the owner. That's Costa Rica. But the 5149 ratio has to be fulfilled. But other than that, foreigners can own, own land and they don't require it's not required that they, they know Spanish. What is required to know Spanish, what is required is when you apply for nationality. So applying for residency creates you a track for nationality. So first you apply for temporal residency and you're a temporal resident for two years. Then you have to renew it for additional two years. But after you are a temporal resident for three years, you can change your category to a permanent resident. So now you only renew it for every three years. And depending the place where you come from, if you are a resident for five or eight years, then you can apply for nationality. And nationality, you get it if you pass an English and Spanish test. 
sorry, a Spanish test and a civics, a social science, right. social studies uh, uh, test of knowing the country like they do in the States, like they do in Switzerland, like they do everywhere. And it's a difficult, difficult exam. I'm an immigrant myself for 11 years and I have applied for nationality and I pass it, but, but it was challenging. You have to study. It's right. an interesting, interesting parallel economy on, on that exam, you know, like so many teachers and courses and books. Very of interesting. Of course. And I mean, just to understand uh, the kind of um, pr processes are involved, do you see a lot of people coming to Costa Rica for citizenship? I'm talking about the investment immigration side of things, the big investors, or do they come there to basically park their money in real estate or, or to buy some commercial activity there? So what I'm seeing from my practice and I'm maybe some other colleagues that are very, very good lawyers here in Costa Rica have a different perspective. But from what, what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of people coming over to invest in real estate. But some of them, they, they want to stay here eight months, you know, escape the winter and, and just hang out here. But then they go back to their, to their home places. But they want to have Costa Rica as a plan B. Some people felt uh, quite trapped with the pandemic, you know, living in their golden cages, in their mansions. And people feel this need to connect with nature. So I'm watching this a lot. But I'm also seeing a lot of digital nomads because another interesting capital immigrant or incentive to bring capital immigrants here in Costa Rica are those who want to live here in Costa Rica, but not necessarily set their roots here. Those are the digital nomads. So Costa Rica passed a very interesting law. This is the, the law 10,008 that pretty much invites any person who the past 12 months have made over $36,000 that they can apply for a digital nomad visa. And this gives them the benefit of no income tax, that you can open bank account, and that you don't have to pay for social security. Right. It's, it's very easy to get it. You get it in three months, more or less. At least from my experience, that's, that's what I'm, you know, like more or less getting. And a lot of people are, are coming over with this law. A lot of young people from different ages, 60, 55, People who are, you know, like already working from home, but they say, okay, I don't want to work from home. I want to work from the beach. And fortunately, Costa Rica has very good, as I said, like very good connections for flights and also a very cool uh, time zone that connects quite well with the Americas. And you don't have to be, you know, like being at 1 a.m. in the morning in Europe and trying to connect with your people and, and back and forth. So you, you're getting a lot of this these people very interesting uh yeah, that characters is from yeah people who from people who make them barely minimum which is 36000 to people who make millions of dollars a year are getting this type of are you visa. seeing this this trend increasing because you know the digital nomad visa basically came out in many countries especially after the pandemic you know and a lot of people mm -hmm. got that option or, or those programs got a boost, especially after or during the pandemic. But now the pandemic is sort of coming to an end yes. or has ended, according to many governments. So what are you seeing? Are you seeing that a digital nomad visa still increasing or? You know, there, there's still people coming to Costa Rica because people, you know, Costa Rica fascinates people. The, the concept of essential Costa Rica, the concept of the green, of the natural, of the wildlife attracts people. So people still come to Costa Rica, but without a doubt, Costa Rica lost a big chance during the pandemic because it was one of the few countries that didn't have all these very uh, drastic restrictions. And they passed the law, but the law was inapplicable because of the lack of the bylaws, you know, the, the statute, how to apply it. It took more than a year. It was passed by the previous government and the, the bylaws was only approved just after like five, six months of the, of the government in charge. So we had like almost 15 month period that the law was enacted, but no one could apply. And it was sad because you get dozens of people, please get my digital nomad visa with all my family. I want to escape this, you know, imprisonment or this lockdown. I'm done with lockdown. But you couldn't. You couldn't. Uh, apply for it. Now it's possible. And now it's fast. Another uh, rea reality check that Costa Rica is facing is that even though you get the approval, you can get the approval very fast, where there is a little bit of complications in the part of the delivery of the ID card, because uh, 
the system is saturated. So that's why a solution that has come up with is uh, you're going to get first a digital ID and then you get your physical ID. So you can do your tramites, you know, the different uh, processes. I want to open a bank account, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this digital nomad is and one thing that is important to mention is like a visa is not a residency. A residency comes with the promise of perpetual, you know, like you're going to be able to renew it if you have seen the requirements. You, you're going to be able to renew it. But a visa is meant to be for 12 months that you can renew it for additional 12 months. No one has reached, because the law is so new, no one has reached to the point of renewing it for the last 12 months and then, okay, what, what's happening next? But what I'm, what I'm feeling is going to happen is either these two things. First, that the people who after living in Costa Rica for two years that they want to renew it for a third time, they're going to allow it because they're bringing, you know, like fresh resources to Costa Rica and you need to keep the ball moving. Or second, that these people will be able to apply for a residency. For example, the rent is residency. You, you don't want to invest $150,000. You can apply for a rent is residency that you can pretty much deposit $60,000 in a bank. And then the bank will issue a letter that you receive the $2,500 per month. And then you get a residency. I if see. you don't want to invest so much. You know, I got involved in residencies by chance. I am an immigrant per se. And when I move here to Costa Rica, I reach out to Fragoman, which is like the most important immigration law firm in the world. And they say my case was impossible, not possible to get it. And I say, I'm a lawyer. I don't have to be able to make it. And I made it. I, I got my residency through, through being a, a, a migrant of knowledge, showing that my, my knowledge would not, you know, like take away jobs for other people. So I would create jobs. And then once you become a permanent residency, a resident, you're free to move from that category per se. And you you can do whatever you want. Other right. thing that's important to mention is that residents here in Costa Rica they can create corporations and set up businesses and have those corporations working for them. So there's a lot of people who maybe invest in, in land, but they also feel, feel like they are still productive and they can still do things and create things. It's such an easy place to do business. And, and that's what I wanted to actually ask yeah. you next. Like, for example, we talked about people who want to buy real estate. We talked about people who come as digital nomads. And now uh, somebody who's an entrepreneur or who wants to establish um, a business, a new business in Costa Rica, how do they go about it? Well, if you want to set up a business in Costa Rica, you only need like a corporation. You only need um, two partners. You can sign up with two partners and you can set up an LLC in a matter of a week that you can enroll it in two, three days in the tax authority. And then you have a, a, a business that you can work. If you, if you, if you're like in a digital nomad setting, right. And if you want to pay the taxes here, it's a progressive tax um, imposition that goes from five, 10, 15, 20, 25% up to 30% for those people who make over $200,000 a year. More or less, uh, it's a little bit different because of the exchange rate, but you can, you know, like for the purpose of this conversation. But setting up a corporation here is easy. It's not complicated at all. In a week, you can have a corporation ready without uh, any problem. Do you see a lot of people doing that, uh, coming to Costa Rica for that purpose? Or is that for the <laughs> other categories? Yes, that's for the other categories, because as a digital nomad, for example, you can get paid and you don't have to pay any taxes. You don't need any corporations. You can deposit directly on your bank account. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, you don't have to pay taxes on the, where the place, the income is originated. But what Costa Rica government has said is that they're not going to be playing detectives. If you pay or not pay taxes, that's your problem. But Costa Rica is not going to charge you any tax for the income you bring here. Some people get paid 50, 200, $1 million you know, a year. And they can deposit in their bank account. And if the bank say, hey, where is this money coming from? They go, hey, I'm a digital nomad. I have all, all in order and the government gave me this benefit. So they don't have to set up a, cor a corporation to, to, to do it. So, you know, we, we've covered how people can come by real estate, by setting up a corporation, digital nomad. And we've also covered a little bit about how citizenship can be obtained if people want to do that. But I want to understand what kind of people... Costa Rica's government wants to come? What kind of investors is it looking for? Is it looking for them to invest in a particular industry or, or a particular sector? Are they looking for, for example, I don't know, for, for green 
technologies or green projects uh, that the government wants that, to push? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. And I have to start with the Costa Rica is a country with a tradition of non-discrimination and a tradition of welcoming and it's very, very extremely friendly people. So the type of immigrant that Costa Rica wants is an immigrant that will contribute, that doesn't have any criminal records, that's not going to put anyone uh, on harm. And it doesn't restrict the investment on a particular type of real estate or any particular type of project. But if you invest, for example, in a mansion or a land that is worth 150000 you get the right to get your residency. It also, it does promote, for example, sustainable tourism infrastructure. If you invest in sustainable tourism infrastructure, you're going to get residency. If you invest in projects of public interest, like, for example, uh, in projects around forest regeneration, things around, you know, bio bioconservation, uh, conservation of stores, those things easily find, like a uh, declaration of public interest you can get you can get um, a residency as well. But Costa Rica will not be put, okay, if you are this type of person, you cannot come. There, there are certain restrictions for people with, uh, with, with, with criminal offenses in the records that you need to pass 10 years because some people have made mistakes. They, Costa Rica allows them, but it must have to pass 10 years and the crime must not have been a violent crime because, or something too serious. You would have to bring a certification and everything. Uh, and that's that, that can complicate the things. But the type of immigrants that Costa Rica are welcoming are those immigrants. And, and this is the interesting thing about Costa Rica. You get to see very nice people, very, very nice people, especially if you if you go live to a beach, Santa Teresa, Tamarindo, eh, Uvita, Dominical. Eh, you, you, it's usual that you will meet business owners and there are people that are very accessible, very very, very nice, very kind, and people who want to to give back to community, which is great. There are very interesting projects here in Costa Rica. A lot of uh, community building you keep seeing more and more of people who want to live in, in certain communities. I wouldn't say that there is a particular type of project, but of course, there is a, another type of um, of incentive. For example, there is the, the free trade zone regime that incentives the investment in technology companies like if you have like a technology company, you can set up a comp- uh, you can set up an investment here, and then you will be also income tax free, you know, free of income tax. So you export all your processes here. So there is over two hundred and fifty companies like Intel, Microsoft, Amazon. They have headquarters here as well for the Americas. Philip Morris International, British American Tobacco, big big corporations have their headquarters here. Because of the tax benefits, tax is something tax benefits. They don't have to pay income tax, and also because you have workforce that it, it's it's valuable for them. Okay, it's easy for to find workers. Those are for the big multinational. I have a couple of clients uh, like that, but but uh, not my niche per se. I prefer individuals. I like going with an approach of helping. You know, rather than to see them, okay, this is profit, rather like help it, I'm here to help. I'm here to to guide it to this process. And I become their person to go to, to coordinate with architects, with constructors, with engineers, with accountants. And I help them, you know, land in Costa Rica. And then they go, okay, let's, let's buy land. Okay, let's do it. Let's talk about the success stories of your among your clients. So share with us, like the kind of success stories that you've seen i mean for example could you give me an example of uh, somebody who has moved with their entire family there and perhaps was easily was able to buy property and and you helped them through that process yes for example i have uh, these clients that uh they want to most of my clients are with the plan b very few are like i want to move here if they just want to have it as a plan b because they love costa rica but i have this client that but a big, big uh, property of 14,000 meters in the area of Kowano, which is a high appraisal company. And they also, in this case, they didn't want to apply for the residency per se, but first they decided to get a digital nomad visa. So they have a digital nomad visa status, plus they have an investment and they can um, get their, they can change their status whenever they want. I have other people who have moved here as again as an investors because they felt that after all this you know crisis of the banks in the states they felt that they wanted to put their investments in in real estate so they bought 
uh, 15 apartments. This $100,000, $150,000 apartment, like studios, one bedroom. So they can put it to work with Airbnb and they have like some people working and, you know, doing all the administration of their uh, Airbnbs. I have other type of clients, for example, love stories of someone who moves here and then they get tired of going out of the country every three months because they get the entry stamp and they're falling in love and they want to live here. That's why they apply for the digital nomad visa to see how they feel. There's a lot of young people uh, also coming over like that, 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 that I've seen. I have other people buying in areas like Santa Cruz, Uita, Cabuya, that are places that the prices are not as high as Tamarindo and not as high as Santa Teresa, but they're going to get higher because it's a lot of real estate boom coming over. Like say, I want to buy here. For example, Cabuya is like one hour away from Tamarindo and it's very virgin, like very virgin. If you look photos of it, it looks a little bit like, I don't know, like the like Bali or something like Southeast Asia, and you're not that far away. So it, it, it's it, at least far away for us, you know, people from the Americas. But um, you keep seeing uh, people who who come here to set up a plan B, to set up a, a new lifestyle, and, and they, they right. manage to do it. Costa Rica is not Disneyland. Uh, this is also important. You know, It's not Disneyland. Uh, like every other country in the world has its pros and cons. What I always recommend to people, for example, I get a lot of calls. I want to start my process right away. And I say, have you been to Costa Rica? No. Okay. So first, come to Costa Rica. Enjoy it for two weeks. And if you want to start, you got me. You count with me. But I need you to see the country first because for me, the most important thing, happy clients. And that right. the clients see me as their friend rather than you know, someone who had a very strong uh, you know, sales speech. And then they come here and they find something different. People have to experience Costa Rica, see how it is. And see if they like it. Some people love it. Like you see so many people tattoo here, Pura Vida. Like a tattoo of Pura Vida is like the slogan of Costa Rica. That is like a very particular word, Pura Vida. Everyone who has come to Costa Rica, they will hear Pura Vida, Pura Vida. It's like, like all good, all peace and love. Everyone's saying Pura Vida. So it's a very chill lifestyle. If you're like a very like neurotic, like I want things now, no, no, it's not going to work for you. Like here you have to, you know, to chill, take it easy, you know, Costa Rica time is like everything's more relaxed. It's really, really, really nice place. I love okay. it. Okay. Okay. I'm convinced. I want to also compare and ask you to compare actually uh, with other options that are available in the region. For example, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is Panama. You know, people can also go there. They also get very good tax incentives there. So what is Costa Rica offering, which is perhaps uh, not available in other countries uh, nearby? Well, first thing, I love Panama and I have good friends from Panama. And it's a great country. But the weather is not as nice in Costa Rica. Costa Rica has really, really extremely nice weather. You you can either have like cold atmosphere or the beach atmosphere, but you will never have that humidity that you feel in Panama City, that you have to be perpetually on an air conditioner. Of course, there are hot days in Costa Rica, but that's different. I would say that the sensation of not having an army is something beautiful. You will not be facing the fear of being victim of and a military oppression. And that's something that makes Costa Rica so unique. It was abolished in 1949. It's a very unique characteristic in the world. Also, the, another thing that I find very interesting is the, the biodiversity and, and how you can connect with nature and connect with healers that help you feel better, feel in tune with yourself. I'm a very alternative lawyer with, in that sense. You know, I, I work with ayahuasca retreat centers. I work with psilocybin, uh, you know, psilocybin uh, retreat centers, uh, retreat practitioners. And I find that that's one of the most beautiful things you have in Costa Rica, you know, people who are here to help others and to share their gift. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And that's what makes Costa Rica so unique, the green nature and the kind nature of its people which many countries have it. El Salvador have it. Nicaragua has it. Panama has it. Argentina has it. But none of them have the say of not having an army. Right. And you're saying that it's uh, more stable as a country compared to so many other countries in the region. And it's has... Yeah, more... just say, okay, go to Peru. Ask the next uh, guest how many presidents Peru has had. Go to Chile. 
uh, look the crisis with the constitution. Go to Argentina. The 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 the, the change rate is crazy. Right. Go to Bolivia. Look in La Paz. What's happening? It's uh, like the the governor of Paz of La Paz is uh, sorry of of Santa Cruz is like imprisoned by the by the government. Like Bolivia is also a critical place. People say go to Paraguay. Paraguay is Plan B, but who, who like Paraguay doesn't have the reputation of Costa Rica of adventure. Of, you know, you can meet up people from hundreds of countries here. It's like a cosmopolitan place when you go to certain beaches here. It's amazing. Like it's a place of freedom. For example, Costa Rica yesterday was the Pride March. Over a hundred thousand people marching without the fear of having a someone killing them with a, with shots or someone running over them. There has never been an incident like that in Costa Rica of someone shooting in a mall. It's really a, a sacred place in Earth. I think it's a blessed place in Earth. And I wonder if this has to do something with the respect of the nature and how nature balances the minds of people. Do you think that's, yeah. and you also mentioned this early in the podcast, that a lot of people from the U.S. are also coming because of what they see, you know, the political chaos in their part of the world. They are coming to Costa Rica to find that peace. Yeah, I keep hearing that from all my American clients, all of them, they say, I'm done with whatever politics it is. It's either, it's either the presidential race, the this, the that. I don't want to enter into politics because I respect each, each of you. I have clients who are Republicans, clients who are Democrats. I don't discriminate my clients as long as they are respectful and they're nice. But yes, I, I hear that a lot. Some people are like scared of gunshots and all, all, all these things. And and it's sad. And this, the United States is such an amazing country. I love the United States with all my heart. And and I find it strange what's happening there. But here in Costa Rica is, is a country that has a lot to offer. And that's why so many millions of people keep coming over. You see, like Shakira is here right now. Like she arrived last last month and and jc and beyonce you can see them in santa teresa in a bar mel gibson and tom brady and giselle and the kardashian who are here like all these celebrities keep coming over like jack dorsey from twitter people like it here nosar is also a, a beach that has the ball moving a lot of people investing in nosara and of course this creates real estate bubbles so there are some other hot places to to invest where you will not lose your legs you know, or, or your eyes, you know, because they're not so expensive. Like Uvita or Minical, you can find, I mean, when you buy a house of a million dollars, I mean, it's a million dollars. A million dollars still look like a million dollars. But in Costa Rica, sometimes you will see, okay, this costs a million dollars. How come? This looks like, a, a, am I in Vancouver or what? <laughs> you know, but depending on the place, because you, you came a little bit too late to the party. So all the, the, the good assets have been given, but you still have that in Costa Rica. For example, Costa Rica is a hub for people who love surfing, people who love bird watching. You can find all type of, hub, of birds in Monte Verde. And you have a country where 45 minutes you can drive and you'll be at the beach and then you drive another 45 minutes and you're in a mountain. So that, which country offers you that? <laughs> Caribbean side, you can be in the, in, the, in the Pacific. You can explore different cultures alongside connecting with your, with your original tribe without disconnecting with whether you're European like you, you are in Europe or you're in, uh, in the States. Right. Herman, thank you so much. We've come to the end of our podcast. And thank you so much for sharing all those insights thank about you. Costa Rica. I'm sure a lot of listeners are really now gearing to go to Costa Rica after he listening to you <laughs> because you've really pumped everybody up that, you know, if uh, <laughs> Kim it's Kardashian and, and, and Jack Dorsey is also there, then why the hell are they in the other parts of the world? So thank you so much for sharing all of that. I want to say in the end to our listeners that please uh, stay tuned to our show. We'll be bringing you more experts from other countries around the world to discuss uh, the investment immigration options there. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope you have a great day. And again, I really appreciate you. Reach out to me out of all the very nice and super incredible lawyers in Costa Rica. So I feel extremely grateful and honored for this. And um, if any client wants to reach out to me, they can simply go on simpletr.com. It's a very simple website, simplecr.com, and then they can reach out. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you so much.